We are excited about what we're going to share with you today. We know it's a busy time, but we want to make sure we keep you abreast and informed. I'm Joaquina George. I'm the Family Engagement Specialist for Cumberland County Schools, and our co-hosts, Warnada and Jonathan, introduce yourself. Well, I'm Jonathan Franz. Uh, I'm the Social Studies Specialist for Cumberland County Schools, Curriculum Specialist. Hello, everyone. I'm Renarda Moy, Chief Communications Officer for the Cumberland County Schools. And our special guests for today um, are Dr. Marvin Conley, our Cumberland County Schools Superintendent. Thank you, Dr. Conley, for joining us. Thank you for having me. And Melody Chalmers McLean. Thank you so much for joining us, Melody. We know you are um, going head in on our reentry task force, so thank you for being with us. Glad to be here. So let's go ahead and get the questions rolling so we can get our families informed. So Dr. Conley, first, can you just tell us a little bit about this reentry task force and how it got started and what it consists of? Thank you, Patia. The task force uh, is our way of involving uh, all of our stakeholders, internal and external, uh, in our decision. Uh, making for the new year, helping us to figure out and navigate what the new year will look like. Uh, none of us have been here before, so none of us are the experts. So it takes all of us, parents, students, teachers, principal, citizen services, more and more, everyone, put our heads together uh, for the best possible outcome. All right, well, let me ask you this. What would you all say are some of the major challenges that schools are facing in planning to return, you know, as far as our schools are concerned during this pandemic? Um, Renata, um, Renata, I'll be glad to kind of chime in on that. Well, we know that there are a lot of unknowns. Right. Um, the pandemic is obviously new uh, and the effects have, we're finding are maybe far reaching and long term. And so, as we think about planning for reopening, we, we're, we're thinking about a lot of different scenarios, understanding that we're going to have to have a new normal um, right. for 2020, 2021. So we're definitely following the guidance that we're getting from the governor's office um, and just trying to be proactive and thinking about all the different factors that will come into play as we make sure that we're having um, a safe reopening as it relates to the COVID-19 scenario. So we're looking at everything from physical space to activity in the buildings, to virtual learning, in-person learning, um, and just thinking about all the different um, factors that we'll need to consider before school begins on August 17th for traditional schools. Um, and at the same time, also just thinking about our year round and our early college and trying to have everything in place so that we address those challenges. But I think it's just a lot of unknowns at this time. And so we're right. just trying to take the best guidance that we're getting from our local, state, and national officials and plan and, and plan for moving forward. That's good. And, uh, I would like to um, use a military analogy. It mm -hmm. reminds me of my days in the ancient Airborne Division. We're on the plane. We don't know where we're going, uh, but we're going somewhere. And we have to jump out at some point. We don't know if we're going to jump out over water, over land, in the jungle, or where. But we do know we're in the air, and we're going somewhere, and we have to jump out 
at some point, uh, no matter what. So, never know. We have to jump out at some point. All right. That sounds, that's, that's a, and you know, just hearing that, I, I think about my father and his time in the military, and he would often say that in terms of, we're going to have to do something. So you're going to have to jump out the plane. So I guess that ties right back to that. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like we're really trying to prepare for everything, but, um, you know, Melody, you mentioned about the the guidance from the state and we've heard that there's um, kind of three different options that that guidance is kind of looking at. Could you talk to us a little bit about what those three options are? Sure. So on July 1st, we anticipate the governor will um, make an announcement regarding the status of reopening. And based on that announcement, Um, There are three possible scenarios. Um, The first scenario is um, what would be pretty much the traditional opening, but we would have um, some social distancing expectations, um, not large assemblies, you know, just really trying to uh, mitigate large groups and having hand sanitizing stations and just uh, some enhanced cleaning protocols. The other um, scenario, number two, would be more of a modified opening in which some of our students may be face-to-face, some might be remote, um, but the goal for school districts would be to reduce their building occupancy to 50%. And so that would be a big challenge, but that would be another scenario. And the final scenario would be to to begin the year under remote instruction. And there is um, work being done in our academics department to make sure that we enhance um, our remote instructional plan, if that is the case, um, that we have to, have to open under that scenario um, so that we can address uh, all of the feedback, feedback that we got from parents during the survey that they took in May um, and make sure that we have a robust remote instructional plan that addresses all of the different um, needs of students. So pretty much there are three, those are the three different scenarios um, that we will that we're considering for next year. And the governor on July 1 will give us some more guidance. Mm-hmm. Melanie, just thinking out to, about those three options that you just provided us, are there any additional guidelines that have been provided by the state or the governor as far as school? Uh, well, like I said, so the three scenarios that I gave you are really about um, where students would engage in instruction. But wherever they're engaged, if they're inside of a building, then we've got to address um, social distancing. Um, So, you know, kind of spreading classrooms out and spacing things out in in office or reception areas. Um, Also, having face coverings um, to keep our children safe and making sure that they are washing their hands, using hand sanitizer. Um, the Department of Health and Human Services has, along with DPI, has given us some guidance around we may need to be monitoring for symptoms um, as students come in to make sure that no students come in the buildings that um, may have high temperature or, um, and also our staff and our families, not just our students. So those are some of the additional services that we'll be providing in schools. But most importantly, we're really concerned about our students' social um, and emotional health and well-being. So our student support services um, are working on a plan to make sure that we address those needs of students, that we know that they have had a turbulent time, I'm sure, not being in school since March. And so as we co- as we come back, whether it be remote instruction or face-to-face instruction, we're going to have a mental health support plan to make sure we address the social, emotional needs of students. So there are a lot of moving parts and a lot of moving pieces, but Cumberland County Schools um, is committed to make sure that we provide the best services for students. And so we're looking at all of these things as we're planning for August 17th and the beginning of school year for year-round in early college um, schools. Mm. And you know, it's the oddest thing since we've been home um, and it's getting as it's getting closer to August. Um, I don't know about you all, but I've gotten calls. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I don't know what we're going <laughs> to But I asked this to you, Dr. Conley, um, as chief of our district. Will the district be responsible for making any firm decisions about the reopening of schools? Or will we or will that guidance primarily come from the state? We will be seeing 
guidance from the state, but um, we know we have to make a decision. The state probably will not tell us what to do. They have never option of what we can do. And then we have to make our best decision. One of the biggest obstacles um, is how the social distance on a bus. Right now, we don't have enough buses nor enough drivers to divide all the children up um, with only 50% on the bus. Um, so that's the main challenge that we see right now. Mm, okay, that's good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, so, I mean, decisions still, there's a, like, like you said, a lot of moving pieces, a lot of parts to this, decisions still being made. So how will families know, how, how will they get the information um, about what the plan ultimately ends up being? We will be using our uh, dynamite communication machine um, <laughs> to send out messages to parents, local media, newspaper, TV, in the mall, everywhere. Uh, once we make a decision, we will share it broadly. And I plan to uh, be in some public spaces uh, to be available as well to the community once we make a decision. That's fantastic. Excellent. Well, you know what? Uh, we're looking at the clock on the wall. We're kind of ticking down. So let me just ask you this. Is there any additional information that you all would like to provide our families that would be helpful at this time? Well, one thing I think that we want families to do is definitely respond to the survey um, that went out, I believe, last week, um, which actually will help us make some of the decisions that we are talking about. Um, so the link, I, I believe, will be available um, on this communication. And so we just really need to hear from families about what their plans are, what their potential thoughts are for next year. Um, and it goes into the three different scenarios that I outlined um, earlier. And so that will help us. So just de definitely keeping parents' um, input in mind. We need their um, feedback on that survey so that would be very helpful if they could make sure that they participate in that manner. And just know that we are working through this process together. Um, we are, it's an unprecedented time um, for this country, for the school system. And so we just really are determined to work through all of the issues and make sure that we um, open up schools in a safe manner so that we can catch kids up for any learning gaps they might have experienced from the early school closure and then move forward. Um, so just really want families to stay engaged, stay tuned, um, complete the survey, and just know that Cumberland County Schools is working diligently um, to make sure that we address all of the issues and concerns that we know are on their minds and that first and foremost is the safety and well-being of our students and staff and community here in Cumberland County. And, and I just want to add as, as a parent, I'm sorry, Dr. Connolly, please oh, go please. ahead. Please. Okay, thank you. I just, you know, because I'm not only a, a, a CCS staff member, I'm, I'm also a parent and, um, you know, I did take that survey and it really it really put my mind to ease. It's like, oh, look, yeah, I'm really, I have a voice here. So I do appreciate it. And I want to say thank you on behalf of all our, our families. Yes, thank Absolutely. you. Yeah, what I would say is that no matter what we decide, someone will not be happy. <laughs> um, and we realize that. But please know that our number one priority is student and staff safety for yeah. everyone to be safe, uh, and that's what we are number one priority, and we will not lose focus on that number one priority. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Conley. Thank you, Melody, for joining us today. Thank you, Renata and Jonathan, for, for joining us again uh, for our Coffee Conversation. Coffee Conversations is brought to you as part of our Cumberland Family Academy which is an initiative to engage our families and keep them informed and involved in the education of their students here in Cumberland County Schools. Please join us for our next um, session, our next conversation on Coffee Conversations. You bring your coffee and we'll bring the conversation. 
Have a wonderful day and be safe. Yeah. <laughs>